Now, we said in the last video that journal entries have to balance. This is a $300 debit and a $500 credit. That can't work. We need another $200 to make this balance. And think about it. Last year, we, we recorded $300 of wage expense. We're paying out $500 of wage expense. So for these two days, we need to record another $200 of wage expense. Now the journal entry balance. We've recorded the right amount of expense in December and in January. We've reduced our cash for the amount we paid employees and we set that liability up on the books in December and took it off the books in January on payday. That's a good example of a wage or salary accrual. It's also a great example of an accrued expense. Now let's spend some time looking at deferrals. And just like accruals, we can have deferred revenues and deferred expenses. Now, Deferred revenues create a new type of account for us. That happens when we've got cash up front that we have to record, but we can't record revenue yet because we haven't earned it. So let's say we're in business and a customer gives us $1,000 up front and wants us to do a job next week. We have to record that cash now. We have to debit cash for the thousand dollars. But we can't record revenue because we haven't earned it yet. GAP says no revenue until you actually do the job. So we have to record the special type of account unearned revenue and credit it for a thousand dollars. Now unearned revenue sounds like a revenue but it's actually not. It's actually a liability. We record a liability here because when we've taken this customer's money, we now have an obligation to either provide the service or give them the money back. That's a liability. Now, next week comes along and we do the job. When we've done the job, we've earned the revenue. So now, we can credit revenue for a thousand dollars. And this liability, we've satisfied it. We've done what we were supposed to do, so now it can go away. We debit unearned revenue for a thousand dollars to take it off the books. And this is a great example of deferred revenue because we got the cash up front, but we had to wait or we had to defer being able to recognize that revenue. Deferred expenses are the same idea. Deferred expenses are where we have cash out now, but we have to defer recognition of an expense. And a good example of that is when we buy supplies. When we buy, let's say, office supplies things like pens or post-it notes. Well, we know that office supplies require cash and they're an asset, but we can't expense them until we've used them. So with office supplies, when we buy the supplies, we're going to debit supplies, which are an asset, let's say for $50. And we'll keep it simple so we pay cash for them. So we credit cash for $50. And here's where it helps to look at the supplies T account. We've got $50 now in the supplies account. Now, at the end of the month, we go back to our supplies account. 
or to our supply closet, or to our supply drawer, and we count how many are left. And let's say that there's only $20 left in the supply closet. Well, that tells us something must have happened to $30 worth of supplies. What typically happens? We put staples in paper. We write on post-it notes. We use ink pens and then throw them away when they're, they dry out or they're done. This supplies account went from 50 to 20 because we used $30 worth of supplies. So what we need to do now is to expense those supplies. We're going to do that by crediting supplies, just like we've done here, for $30. So there's our $30 credit, just like here. Supplies decrease on the credit side. And now we need to record those supplies cost. We need to record supplies expense for $30. And what we've done there is deferred recognition of the expense. We paid cash now, but we deferred expensing these supplies until later. So those are two examples of accruals and deferrals, one each of revenues and expenses. And you can have lots of examples of each. I hope that helps you as you prepare for your test.